In this video, we're going to be solving linear inequalities, which are similar to equations, except that our equal sign has been uh, replaced by an inequality sign. And we're going to use the number line to graph the solution set of the inequality. And then we're going to write the solution set in interval notation, because our solution set is going to consist of more than one number. Now, in this first uh, example, we want to graph the inequality x is greater than 0. As you know, x is greater than 0 means that x is a positive number. So this inequality is just another way to represent the positive numbers. Now, to graph the solution set, look at 0. And 0 is called the boundary point of this solution set. We put an open dot at 0. And then we're going to draw an arrow to the right to include every positive number that's just bigger than 0. So these, as you know, this we can't get to a highest positive number. These will go on forever. So to write the solution set in interval notation, we use parentheses because we have an open boundary point. We put 0 on the left. That's our smallest point in our solution set. And because we don't have a highest number, we use this symbol called infinity, which is like a sideways 8. And that's our interval notation. OK, the next problem says x is less than 4. So our boundary point this time is 4. Again, we have an open circle at 4 because we have a strict inequality, no equal sign. But this time, we're going to look. we need all the x's, all the numbers that are smaller than 4. So we're going to go to the left of 4 and draw our arrow. And when we're draw, um, rewriting this in interval notation, this time uh, 4 Oh, excuse me, I wrote a 0, but I meant to put 4. 4 is our, our greatest number, so it goes on the right. And we use negative infinity to denote all the numbers that are negative and never end. OK, in this next problem, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So negative 1 is the boundary point. Because we have an equal sign this time, our boundary point is going to be a closed dot. We're going to use a closed dot. And to graph all the numbers that are bigger than negative 1, we're again going to go to the right, draw an arrow to the right. So in our interval notation, negative 1 is our smallest number, but we have to include negative 1 this time. So we're going to use a bracket instead of a parenthesis. Again, we're going to use our infinity because we don't have a highest number. And infinity never gets a bracket. Infinity always gets parentheses. So that's our interval notation for solution. OK, our next problem, 13, is less than 2x minus y. So let's get that x on the left-hand side, because we're used to graphing that. And so we're going to add negative 2x to both sides, just like we did with our equations in another video. And so on the left, I get negative 2x plus 13, which is less than negative 1, because these two x's cancel. And now we need to move the 13 over. We want our x by itself. So we're going to subtract 13 from both sides of the inequality. And here I get a negative 14. And these 13s cancel. And I get negative 2x is less than negative 14. Now, in order to isolate x, I'm going to have to divide by negative 2, both sides of this inequality. So I need to tell you about a rule for inequality. Dividing or multiplying both sides of an inequality reverses the sign, the inequality sign. So I'm going to reverse this less than, and it's going to become a greater, a greater than sign. Now my negative 2's are going to cancel. So I get x is greater than, and then negative 14 divided by negative 2 is a positive 7. So 7's our boundary point. I'm going to put an open circle because we have a no, let, no equal sign. We want all the x's that are bigger than 7, so our arrow goes to the right. Now let's check this one. Pick one of the numbers that's to the right of 7. I'm going to pick 10. x equals to 10. You could pick any number, but I'll pick 10. It was easy. And I'm going to substitute it into my original inequality, where x is. So I get 13 is less than 2 times 10, so i got to do this multiplication first. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 minus 1 is 19, and yes, 13 is less than 19. So that checks. OK, let's go to the next problem. This time we have x's on both sides of the equation. 
we're going to move the x to the left by subtracting x from both sides. So I get 6, I add these two like terms, this is a negative 5x, less than or equal to, my x's cancel, and I get a 1 here. Now, I need to subtract a negative 6 to both sides to isolate my x, and I just want to let you know that subtracting or adding a negative number from both sides of an inequality does not reverse the sign, the inequality sign, so that's why I didn't reverse it here. However, now I'm going to divide by a negative 5, so now I do have to reverse the inequality sign. So I'm going to erase this less than or equal to sign, and it's going to become a greater than or equal to sign, since I'm dividing by negative 5 both sides. Now let's reduce here and here, and so we get x is greater than or equal to 1, making our boundary point a 1 and a closed dot there because of the equal sign. And since we want all the x's that are greater than or equal to 1, we're going to put our arrow going to the right. On our interval notation, again, 1 needs to a bracket because it's a solid dot, and then infinity because our arrow goes to the right, and infinity always gets a parenthesis no matter what. For our final problem, we've got, uh, well, a little bit more complicated problem here. Have a parenthesis with a negative sign in front, so we're going to distribute that negative. It's like having a negative 1. So we're going to multiply, and we that changes our signs inside the parentheses. Negative 7x minus 5 plus 1 is greater than 3x minus 1. Now let's combine the like terms on the left. So we get negative 7x minus 4 is greater than 3x minus 1. And again, we're going to need to get those x's together. This time we're going to put them to the left-hand side. Those are my like terms. So we're going to subtract 3x. And remember, subtracting doesn't change the inequality sign. So we're just going to add these like terms. Negative 10x minus 4 is greater than the 3x's which cancel, so we get negative 1. Now we want to isolate the x, so let's add 4 to both sides of the inequality. We get negative 10x is greater than 3, and now we need to divide by a negative 10 both sides. You know what that's going to do to the sign, right? Because we're dividing by a negative, so Let's switch that greater than sign to a less than sign. And now we're going to reduce here. We get x is less than negative 3 tenths. Now to graph that in our number line, we know that negative 3 tenths is not quite negative 5 tenths, right? Negative 5 tenths is a half. so. I'm going to come here between 0 and negative 1, and I'm going to come a little bit closer to 0, put a little tick mark there, and I'll write in very tiny here a negative 3 tenths. That's where my negative 3 tenths is. That's my boundary point. Open dot, and we want all the x's that are smaller than that, so the arrow is going to go to the left-hand side. And this time, instead of interval notation, we're going to use set builder notation to uh, describe the solution set. You may have that in some of your homeworks. So we use a little curly bracket for a set. And this, we write the set of all x. This line means such that x is less than negative 3 tenths. So it kind of repeats what you've already written before, but just puts it in set brackets. And that's our solution.